In this brief presentation, I'd like to talk to you about a problem-solving technique called IDEAL. First, we might ask ourselves, what is a problem? Well, a problem exists when there is a discrepancy between an initial state and a goal state, and there is no ready-made solution for the problem solver. So what you might think about, as you would with any problem, there's somewhere that you're at, and there's some goal that you want to reach, but there's not an obvious way to get to the goal. So this is what we're defining as a problem. And in this course and for this presentation, we're concerned with what we call non-routine problems. And these are defined as problems that are novel and need new thinking. So some examples of problems are, what is two times two? Or design a device to stop grease from popping on a cook when frying bacon. Clearly, most of us would know the answer to 2 times 2, and that's just something that we would recall. This is referred to as a routine problem. It takes no new thinking. But to design a device to stop grease from popping on a cook when frying bacon has many different aspects to that problem. There are many different approaches we might want to take. And so this is what we would call a non-routine problem, and these are exactly the types of problems that we're interested in in this course. So some other examples of non-routine problems would be something like, what day follows the day before yesterday if two days from now will be Sunday? Or, a friend asks you to join their firm. She receives half of the profits from a silent partner that owns the firm. If your friend offers you two-thirds of her compensation, what is your take? In both cases, these are problems that we're trying to solve. There's no obvious answer to these problems, and we're going to have to sit down and think about some ways to approach getting to our solution. Now, often when we're confronted with these non-routine problems, there are some psychological things that come into play that we want to make sure that we avoid, and we can avoid them by understanding that we're going to be attacked by these problems. So avoid mental escape daydreaming and not focusing on the task. This is normally the first thing that we do when we start to have trouble um, with not being able to come up with a ready-made solution to problems. And then often we literally walk away from the task. And this is where you might be saying things to yourself like, I don't really know how to do this. This is not natural for me. And even sometimes we convince ourselves that we're not really interested in a particular problem. So again, we want to talk about our problem-solving technique, IDEAL, and IDEAL is an acronym, and the acronym stands for Identify Problems and Opportunities, Define Goals, Explore Possible Strategies for Solving the Problem, Anticipate Outcomes, and then Act, and then finally, Look Back and Learn from What You've Done. So let's look at each of these aspects individually and look at some examples. So first, we'd like to identify problems and opportunities. In most cases, when we're doing problems in a classroom setting, we don't get the opportunity to do this. But we want to start thinking about how we can look at the world around us and actually identify problems and opportunities, things that need to be solved, and start thinking about solutions to those problems. This example actually comes from that exactly. Someone actually was concerned about being popped with hot bacon grease while cooking bacon on a stovetop. So you might want to develop a method for reducing grease splatters when frying bacon. Or for you all, you might want to obtain an A in your math course this semester. So once you've identified the problem, the opportunities, then you want to define goals. You want to come up with some specific goals that need to be achieved so that you can actually attain the solution to your problem. So again, let's look at our example. We want to develop a method for reducing grease splatters when frying bacon. So the first thing we might want to do is we might say as a goal, we'll reduce the heat. Or as a goal, we'll use a long sleeve heat retardant glove. Now tomorrow in your groups you'll have an opportunity to work on this and I want you to come up with a set of goals that will support getting an A in your math course. After we develop goals, it's time to explore strategies. 
So we have some goals. What are some strategies that we might employ that will actually help us achieve these goals that are going to get to the solution to our problem? So again, we have our example of the bacon grease splatters. We know we want to reduce the heat, and we're going to use a long sleeve heat retardant glove. So what are some things we might do to reduce the heat? Well, we could move the pan away from the actual heat source because in some cases you cannot change the source of heat. It might be over an open flame, for example. Or we literally might turn the heat down on the stove, which then would reduce splatters. And in our second case, we could use a, some sort of glove on our hand that goes up our arm to kind of reduce the splatters. So again, tomorrow in class, I'll have you think about some strategies that you can employ to help you attain the goal of getting an A in your math class. So now we get to the anticipate and act. So what can we anticipate or observe and then act upon? This is what we want to do. So we've got a set of goals. We've come up with some strategies. Now we want to start to anticipate the outcomes from our strategies and then think about how we're going to act on those outcomes so we actually get to our solution. So as mentioned before, here we are with our bacon. We reduce the heat, turn down the heat, or increase the distance to the flames we talked about doing. And then we'll use a long sleeve, use a long sleeve heat retardant glove, which reduces the amount of hot grease hitting exposed skin. So we could do those things, but then think about what might be some of the impacts of that. So if you turn the heat down or move the pan away from the heat source, how does that impact the way your bacon is being cooked? That might be an issue that you'd want to address. Or reduce the amount of hot grease hitting your exposed skin still might not take care of the problem of now you have grease all over your stove top. So there are lots of things that might come up that you didn't think about as you came up with your um, goal and then you came up with a strategy that you were going to employ that might be um, needing some sort of solutions as well. So of course tomorrow you have the opportunity to do this for attaining your A in your math class. And then a final step is to look back and learn. So as I just mentioned, you would look at the circumstance and say, well, we reduced the heat, but now our bacon's not crispy. So how are we going to adjust our strategy so that we get the crispy bacon that we want, but we don't end up with the hot grease splatters? And of course, you'll get the opportunity to do this tomorrow in class.